This is Lesson 1124, Eisenhower, McCarthyism, and the Cold War. Essential question, how did the Cold War increase fears in the United States? The Cold War by the 1950s. In the 1950s, Cold War tensions led to anxiety and fear in America. The USSR dominated Eastern Europe and China had fallen to communism. Korean War had almost led to a full-scale war with China. And the U.S.-Soviet atomic arms race led to fears of a nuclear attack. The discovery of Soviet spies in the U.S. led to a new Red Scare, like the one in the 1920s. During the Red Scare, the government became concerned about the growth of communism in America. Causes? The Soviets successfully established communist regimes in Eastern Europe after World War II. The Soviets developed the atomic bomb more quickly than expected. Korean War ended in a stalemate. And Republicans gained politically by accusing Truman and the Democrats of being soft on communism. The effects of the Red Scare. Millions of Americans were forced to take loyalty oaths and undergo loyalty investigations. Activism by labor unions went into decline. People often tend to associate labor unions with socialism. Many people were afraid to speak out on public issues, and anti-communism continued to drive U.S. foreign policy. The Loyalty Review Board was created to investigate and dismiss disloyal government employees, and the House Un-American Activities Committee, HUAC, investigated suspected communists in the entertainment and other industries. So this was a committee in the House of Representatives, not the Senate. From 1947 to 1951, 3.2 million government employees were investigated. Of these, only 212 were dismissed as security risks. 2,900 resigned rather than face investigation. Red Scare fears in America were heightened by the discovery of spies working for the USSR. HUAC, the House Un-American Activities Committee, became very active at this time. State Department employee Alger Hiss was convicted of spying for the USSR, and the couple, Ethel and Julius Rosenberg, were convicted and executed for passing atomic bomb secrets to the USSR. Here's a picture of Alger Hiss and a picture of Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. In 1947, numerous Hollywood writers and executives were investigated by HUAC. 500 of those were blacklisted from the film industry, and some were sent to prison for refusing to answer HUAC's questions in the House of Representatives. Here's a picture of protesters protesting against what HUAC was doing. McCarthyism. In the year 1950, Wisconsin Senator Joseph McCarthy emerged as the leader of anti-communism in the U.S., he attacked President Truman and the Democrats for supposedly allowing communists to infiltrate the government. He used public trials to make unsupported accusations against suspected communists in the State Department and the U.S. military. Let's examine the document titled McCarthy's Telegram to Truman, and then after a brief discussion, read Truman's response to McCarthy. This is McCarthy's Telegram to Truman. And it says this, the president, the White House. In a Lincoln Day speech at Wheeling Thursday night, I stated that the State Department harbors a nest of communists and communist sympathizers who are helping to shape our foreign policy. I further stated that I have in my possession the names of 53 communists who are in the State Department at present, a State Department spokesman. By the way, this list that he wrote to the president about did not exist. He made it up. He was lying. So this is President Truman's response to McCarthy. I love it. My dear Senator, I read your telegram of February 11th from Reno, Nevada with a great deal of interest. And this is the first time in my experience, and I was 10 years in the Senate, that I have ever heard of a senator trying to discredit his own government before the world. You know that isn't done by honest public officials. Your telegram is not only not true and an insolent approach to a situation that should have been worked out between man and man, but it shows conclusively 
that you are not even fit to have a hand in the operation of the government of the United States. I am very sure that the people of Wisconsin are extremely sorry that they are represented by a person who has as little sense of responsibility as you have. Sincerely yours, HST. And that's Harry Truman. McCarthy's attacks lasted four years, but McCarthyism did not result in a single confirmed communist or spy in the U.S. government. McCarthy was briefly popular, but by 1954, the Senate and American public grew tired of his bullying techniques, and he was censured by the Senate. Essential question. How did the Cold War evolve by the 1950s, and how did President Eisenhower respond to these foreign policy challenges? A couple of warm-up questions. What was the Red Scare? What was HUAC? And how did Joe McCarthy increase the tensions of the Red Scare? Eisenhower and the Cold War. Here are a couple of videos to watch. On this first one, what does the commercial want people to think about Eisenhower during his election campaign? And on this next one, what war is the character Fonzie from the TV show Happy Days from the 1970s referring to when he says, Ike won the war for us? In 1952, World War II hero Dwight D. Eisenhower was elected president. At home, he tried to promote the good times of the 1950s economic boom that was going on. In foreign policy, he took a strong stand against communism. Eisenhower began a new look to fight the Cold War. He invested heavily in new long-range nuclear missiles, ICBMs. In foreign policy, he used veiled threats of nuclear war to achieve his goals. And this was a negotiating technique called brinksmanship, aggressively negotiating your adversary to the very brink of war to get what you want. In the case of a Soviet attack, the U.S. promised quote, massive retaliation, thus making use of nuclear weapons by either side unlikely. The stockpiling of ICBMs, and that stands for Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Nuclear submarines that could fire nuclear missiles. So what keeps us out of nuclear war? The answer to that question is MAD, Mutual Assured Destruction. It's the certainty that we will both be completely destroyed if a nuclear war ever happens. So it must never happen. Americans were made anxious by the threat of nuclear war, and many built fallout shelters for protection. They were very popular. Here's another fallout shelter right here. In the inside of a fallout shelter. In response to the threat of a Soviet nuclear attack, Eisenhower pushed Congress to create the interstate highway system in 1956. That meant 41,000 miles of divided highway to connect major U.S. cities. In addition to helping promote trade and travel, these highways were considered vital to evacuate cities during a nuclear attack. So here is a picture of our interstate highway system. In addition to relying on nuclear weapons, Eisenhower increased the role of the CIA in foreign policy, the Central Intelligence Agency. The CIA spied on foreign nations and carried out covert operations to weaken communist governments. The CIA led successful coups in Iran and Guatemala and tried to overthrow Fidel Castro in Cuba. The Eisenhower Doctrine after Stalin's death in the year 1953, new Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev began to challenge U.S. influence. In 1955, the USSR formed the Warsaw Pact Alliance. In 1956, the Soviet military violently suppressed an anti-communist revolt in Hungary. Also in 1956, the USSR began to make moves towards the Middle East, where all that oil is. So in 1957, the president issued the Eisenhower Doctrine, pledging the USA to protect the Middle East from communism. Sputnik and the space race. 
In 1957, the USSR launched the first space satellite, Sputnik 1. And because of the success of this satellite, people around the world feared that the U.S. had lost its competitive edge. The National Aeronautic and Space Administration, NASA, was formed in 1958 to catch up to the Soviets. And the National Defense Education Act was created to promote math, science, and technology education. Advanced Placement AP classes were created as a result of the National Defense Education Act. The space race intensified the Cold War between the USA and the USSR. Here's a picture of the satellite Sputnik that caused such a sensation. It weighed about 180 pounds and was about the size of a beach ball. The original seven NASA Mercury astronauts. Eisenhower failed to thaw the Cold War by the end of the 1950s. In 1960, an American U-2 spy plane was shot down over the USSR, proving that we were spying on Russia. Eisenhower was also unable to negotiate with the USSR on weapons reduction. Before leaving office, he warned all of us against overspending on defense. He warned of us creating what he called a military-industrial complex, which is something we have in spite of his warning. Here's a picture of one of those U-2 spy planes and a picture of Francis Gary Powers, the pilot who was actually shot down. Here is a chart of nuclear warheads over the years 1945 to 2002. And as you can see, in the 1960s, we had over 30,000 of them. Then, subsequent treaties that we made with the USSR reduced the number of those nuclear warheads over time. Here is that same chart over time with the number of Soviet nuclear warheads. And as you can see, they got above 45,000 in the late 1980s. Also, they were reduced by various treaties that we made with them. The U.S. budget from 1940 to 2000, percentage spent on defense. And you can see that in 1940, only 18% of our federal budget was spent on defense. But in 1950, that rose to 32%. And in 1960, it was a whopping 52%. Over half of our national budget was spent on defense. By the year 2000, that had declined to only 16%. And here are a couple of reactions to that. For example, Eisenhower in the top picture. We must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. And look how Martin Luther King reacted to this kind of data. A nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. Conclusions. By the year 1960, the Cold War remained the major focus of U.S. foreign policy. Truman contained communism in Europe, while Eisenhower used the CIA and brinksmanship to limit Soviet global influence. But Americans remained anxious due to McCarthyism, the threats of nuclear war, and increasing government spending on defense.